I'm Insomniac and this is the TW Steel CB65. Okay, first of all, another big shout out to Anthony for sending this in. If you've been watching this channel for more than a day, you know that he sends in quite a few watches to be reviewed here. Much appreciated. If you have anything you'd like to see reviewed here on Should I Time This, email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I'll let you know where to send the watches. They'll be reviewed, insured, and sent back. So this is the TW Steel CB65. But all over the internet, including not necessarily on the actual web page on the TW Steel site, but up in the tab for that web page when you pull up this watch on the TW Steel site. This is called the CB65 Canteen Bracelet. I googled what is a canteen bracelet and all I got were tons of links to TW Steel watches. And the TW Steel site actually makes no mention of a canteen bracelet or what that means, but they do have a canteen collection. But I still have no idea what that has to do with the bracelet. So if anybody watching this knows what the hell a canteen bracelet is, please leave it down in the comments. And before we dive into the sections of this review, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I have a lot of new watch reviews coming soon. I don't want you to miss any of those. And that's it. I guess let's get into the watch. The case on this watch is actually really nice, but there's a catch. And I have to start there because there's almost no point to the rest of this review. If the first criteria doesn't work for you, it is a huge watch. You have to appreciate a big watch on your wrist in order to wear this thing, or already in the first section, you know it's not for you. The diameter of this piece is listed at 45 millimeters, which is already sizable, but that doesn't include the huge screw-on crown cover. With that crown cover, from the left side of the case to the end of that cover, we're talking 54 millimeters. So 54 millimeters across the wrist make sure you have a large wrist. Now, if you're still here and big watches are your thing, this is actually a really nice case. The TW Steel site says it's made out of high grade 316L steel, and judging by the serious weight and heft of the watch body, it feels like it. But even more important than that, the machining is really well done. The angles at the lugs were subtly but beautifully shaped, and the whole case gives you the type of solid impression of something milled out of like a solid block of steel which might actually be the case, I don't know for sure, but that's what it actually feels like. Case back is a screw down type with a large brushed steel border around the exhibition window, which shows off the Seiko NH35A automatic movement. And you have some info about the watch engraved around the outer edge. The fixed bezel on this watch is what TW Steel calls a hammered bezel. Not really sure what that means. I'm about 99% sure that this isn't a hand hammered bezel and it doesn't really look like it's machine hammered either but it is unique and deeply textured, the pattern going all the way around the bezel. Speaking of the bezel, the finish on the bezel and the inner links of the bracelet are what TW Steel calls PVD yellow gold plating, which to my knowledge will be more adorable than if it were some cheap sprayed finish, so that's also a quality touch. Last but not least, we have the crown. Now I'll admit that I'm not a fan of these crown covers, especially when they're the size of small soda cans, but not unlike with the main body of the case, I'm actually impressed with the quality of the machining and attention to detail here, both outside and inside the crown cover. First of all, we have the aesthetics of the crown cover. The outer portion that you turn to unscrew the cover has a really grippy knurling to it that matches the quote unquote hammered bezel well, and the dual hinged piece that connects the crown cover to the case has TW cut through it, a nice little detail here, and the large face of the crown cover has TW engraved into it as well. Unscrew the crown cover, and what you see is not what you get. Let me explain. When I first unscrewed the crown cover, I had the same thought that you probably just had, something to the extent of, are you kidding me? That tiny thing is the crown? And I assumed, based on how absolutely tiny the crown was, that it would be useless for winding the watch or setting the time, and I was wrong. Somehow, that tiny crown is actually more than grippy enough to easily wind the movement, and easy enough to pull out that manipulating the hands for a time adjustment was a breeze. So believe it or not, that tiny crown is as functional as it is small. So overall, minus the mammoth size, it's actually a very nice case. The dial on this watch can be summed up in one sentence. Beautiful dial minus everything on the dial. Of course, that might require some explanation. 
Now the main surface of the dial is what they call a sunray green dial. It's a deep green dial with a sunburst effect and the dial itself, the green surface, is really nice. The sunburst effect plays with light really well, giving you varying hues of attractive greens, all of which look good behind the gold tone hour markers and numerals and work well with the PVD yellow gold bezel and bracelet inserts. But then it's downhill from there. The minute track is a standard printed minute track done in thin white lines. Can't really complain about that. That's standard on many dark colored dials. Then you have the hour markers and numerals. They're polished pretty well, but they're thin. And personally, I think the font used for the numerals, although bold, which is what they were going for, looks kind of cheesy and childish. Then there's the TW Steel logo under 12, which is the two dots, then the text. I can see the TW Steel text being white, being that the automatic and 10 ATM text at the bottom of the dial is white, but why are the dots gold then? And the hands are the most confusing part of the whole visual package. What color even are these? Depending on the lighting, they look white sometimes, they look like some kind of super light sprayed gold other times, and sometimes they almost look silver. I'm pretty sure it's just a light gold. When you have it under bright light like I do here, it's pretty clear that it's probably a light gold, but I can tell you this, it doesn't match literally anything else on this dial. The whole presentation of this dial really comes across as indecisive. Not sure what they were going for here. You have a date window at 3 o'clock, which is large and easily legible, uh, but it's a black numeral on a white disc. Not a big deal, but with a darker colored dial like this, a white disc sticks out like a sore thumb. I would have went with a black disc and a white numeral or a custom disc that matches the dial color. Last but not least, we have the hands. I already addressed the color situation, but then we have more interesting choices. First of all, the shapes don't make sense. You have a beautifully shaped second hand, something like you'd see on a nice dress watch, then two literal rectangles for the hour and minute hands. And all three of these hands are way too short for this dial. Seriously, just look at the entire dial for a second. Those hands don't look like they actually even go to this watch. So long story short, it's a quality backdrop under a confusing mix of interesting decisions, we'll say. The only usable complication on this watch is the date at 3 o'clock. It's large and easy to read, and of course the date is a useful complication, so no complaints here. The loom on this watch kind of solidifies a theory I had in my head about the dial regarding the hands. It's like the hands they used on this piece are literally from some other watch. Or maybe they only make one set of hands and they just throw them on everything. They didn't make sense in the dial section and they don't make sense here. As you can see, the loom is actually pretty good under a full charge, and it glows fairly bright. It glows nice and even, and it actually lasts considerably well. But I'm sure you already saw the problem. Where are the loom markers on the dial? There's zero loom on this watch besides the three hands. So how are we supposed to tell the time in the dark? How about some small dots of loom behind the hour markers? Or at least out by the minute track? Nothing. So a set of hands with pretty good loom, but no reference points on the dial for you to actually be able to use it. Time at a glance on this watch is mostly good. It's a huge uncluttered dial, and the hands and indices contrast really well against the dark green backdrop. But these hands again, they're too short for this dial, they don't even get near the minute track, and the ends of the minute and hour hands are literally flat. So although you definitely can tell the time on this piece, if you want the exact time to the minute, you have to actually try and visually line up the center of the minute hand with whatever it's pointing at, because literally speaking, the end of the minute hand is so wide that it's always pointing to two minutes at the same time. The bracelet on this watch, although an acquired taste aesthetically, is a perfect bracelet for this watch. First of all, it has a heft and thickness to it that actually balances the giant watch body quite well. The PVD yellow gold center lengths are textured in that same quote unquote hammered pattern as the bezel, and the clasp is done in a similar gold tone with the TW Steel logo and text well engraved into it. The clasp also has fine adjusters for sizing, and overall the bracelet felt sturdy and stable and moderately comfortable on the wrist. Believe it or not, one of my main complaints with this bracelet has nothing to do with anything I just talked about. 
It has to do with the pins or version of pins that TW Steel uses here. They're not push pin style pins like on most every other watch bracelet in existence, they're screws. Not only are the tiny flathead screws easy to drop and lose when adding or removing links, but you have to own two of the tiny flathead screwdrivers small enough to manipulate the screws because without holding the screw on one side in place with the screwdriver, you can't unscrew the other side. Then once you get the screw out, you actually can't use the little screwdriver to push the rest of the pin out. You have to use a pin pusher tool to push it through. So essentially you need three tools, a well-lit uncluttered area and the patience of Mother Teresa to adjust or remove links on this bracelet. Last but not least, we have value, and this is a hard one. As of the time of this review, I found this watch for sale online for $129. Now $129 for a solid, well-built, fairly unique watch with a reliable Seiko movement in it is actually a good deal. But one, do you want to watch this big, and two, can you live with those hands? As you saw in the dial section, the loom section, and again in the time at a glance section, the biggest issue with this watch is this orphan set of hands that I am honestly pretty sure that they just borrowed from another watch. If you could find this handset to be, let's say, quirky and charming instead of misplaced and annoying, then again, assuming that you have a large wrist, I'd actually say this is a really good value for $129. But if you don't tick both of those boxes, I'd be hard pressed to uh, spend anything near $129 on this watch, which overall averages out to a decent value right smack in the middle is what I'm saying. Anyway, a big thanks again to Anthony for sending this in. As much as I had plenty of things to uh, pick at here, this actually really is a very unique piece. So uh, I actually requested that he send this one in along with some others. Happy to get it on here. Uh, as I'm sure quite a few people might be curious, these watches are popping up all over the place. So in case you want to know what's what, there you go. And again, thanks to Anthony. Make sure you hit the like button for Anthony as a thanks for him sending all these watches in for uh, me to review for you. Again, stay tuned. There are a lot of new watch reviews coming. And that's it. I'll see you at the next one.